Hello and thank you for joining me again today. This video is being brought to you by special request from one of my viewers, Mr. Jason Stewart, asked me to do a review on a distro called Ceylon Linux. Ceylon Linux is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu uh, out of Sri Lanka, or as it was known until I believe it was 1972 as Ceylon. Now, Ceylon Linux, they say, is an easy-to-use, pre-configured, free operating system specially designed for your home computer. It comes with a massive collection of software which aims to fulfill your daily digital needs. From its design, Ceylon Linux brings you the best tweaks, apps, and configurations available in the Linux world today. And as a high-quality operating system, Ceylon Linux has a great usability and a predefined look making you feel at home. Well, we're going to take a look at that. Their website is its a nice website. It's very well put together, easy to navigate, lots of good information here. We're going to take a look at some of the technical details. It is based on Ubuntu Linux 12.04, which is a long-term support model, so that's really nice and it features the GNOME Classic desktop. Uh, also it has the Unity and GNOME shell, but most of their tweaks and configurations focuses on GNOME Classic, so that's what we're going to look at today. They recommend that you have at least a 1.7 GHz processor and 1 GB of RAM, so we should be okay with this today because as always I'm going to be running this in a virtual box with 2 GB of RAM and 2 dedicated processors so we double their minimum system requirements. So let's get down there and take a look at it. The GNOME Classic Desktop is a implementation or, or another version of the GNOME Shell. So when you get GNOME Shell you also get GNOME Classic. It is a purely Linux look and feel. So if you're a new user coming over from Windows, if you're very experimental, go ahead and give it a try. But I would recommend this type of desktop environment for a more seasoned Linux user. If you've gotten started with something that has a more traditional desktop layout and you've become familiar with the, the, the feel of Linux and how things are set up and laid out, by all means give this a try. But I really, with they, they've done a lot of tweaks, a lot of configurations to this system, and I really feel that you need some experience in Linux to fully appreciate everything that they've done for you here. Now, being based on Ubuntu 12.04, you know you're going to receive uh, patches and updates at least through 2017. So they have a nice stable base that they've built upon here. So we're going to take a look. If, if I had to summarize really quick what Ceylon Linux is all about, this is Ubuntu with Bling. Okay, you're really going to need uh, 3D support in order to fully appreciate what they've done for you here because there's lots and lots of eye candy. This is uh, the compositing is being handled here by Compiz, and it actually has a very nice implementation of Compiz. Um, they have all of their visual effects going. Nice paint fire there and the water effect is, is happening for you here. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here. Control Alt Button 1 will snap out your cube and I really have to say that as far as Compass implementations go this is one of the snappier, more responsive implementations of Compass. And bear in mind, folks, this is running in a virtual box. So installed on your hardware, this is going to be even faster. So let's take a look at it and see what they have going on here. We have the one panel across the top with Docky along the bottom. And in the Docky, we have the Firefox web browser, Skype, Miro, GIMP uh, image editor, terminal, and a shortcut to your system settings and trash bin. On the desktop we have a computer icon and a shortcut to your home folder. We also have a combination of Conky 
these two graphics are brought to you here as Conky, it's your clock and your CPU monitor. But along the bottom, we have some screen plugins here, and you can actually control those right here. It's brought to you by Screenlets. So, good rule of thumb, you can tell Conky from Screenlets if you right click it and you get a context menu, those are going to be your Screenlets. So, up in the upper right hand corner of the, of the panel, we have our system menu where you can get to your system settings, uh, printer configuration, and your session controls. You can switch users, your calendar and clock as always, and you know I really love the visual effects they have going on here. Volume control, network controls, battery monitor if applicable, you have your plug-in for your chat and email. You also have a notification area, updates. Again, the screenless manager, and you can launch more screenless, but it looks like they have all of them installed. And these screenlets, we'll just pick one here. Uh, let's see what this nanometer does. And it'll bring up the nanometer, and you can drag it around the desktop and put it where you want it or close it out altogether. So that's pretty cool. Synapse is installed by default and Synapse is a really nice uh, really nice program. In fact, let's take a moment here with that. One of, the, one of the few complaints I have about this system is with Synapse. Synapse is used to search your programs and you can search files also on your on your system. You see this implemented a lot on uh, open box desktops. One of the complaints that I have about this system is they've tied Synapse to the tab key, which can be a bit annoying if you're in a terminal and you're trying to use the bash autocomplete, or if you're trying to fill out a form and you're trying to tab between fields every time you hit tab, it opens up Synapse. So I'm going to show you in just a moment how you can uh, how you can fix that. But you simply start to type fire and it'll bring up suggestions so you can launch the Firefox web browser right from here. So tab gets away gets rid of that again. So what we're going to do is come down to uh, our panel. When you click Synapse we're going to go to preferences and you can change the key binding right here. So we're going to do shift tab. Okay? So that's easy enough to change. Just a minor problem, didn't care for its default setting, that's how you fix it. Moving on, we have a thesaurus. Don't know why it's up there in the panel, but okay. And then moving over to the left-hand side, we have our system monitor. Let's see what this is doing. We're running at 500 megabytes of RAM, which, yeah, okay, that's about Midland. That's running close to the same as what you're going to expect from GNOME Shell, KDE, Cinnamon. So, not the lightest desktop, but then again, we have all these visual effects going. And also, it's running in a virtual box. And in my experience, uh, the RAM consumption of the virtuals tends to be a bit higher. You're probably going to run between 400 and 450 with this installed on, uh, on hardware. Moving along, we have a force quit applet, so if something becomes non-responsive, you can force force quit it here. Uh, let's see, run an application by choose, typing command or choosing from a list. Okay, this is your run dialog. Uh, very similar to Synapse, so okay. We have our places menu to navigate your file system. And now we come to the applications menu. The Applications menu is just the default menu for a GNOME, uh, GNOME Classic interface with your applications being categorized by their usage. So you have accessories, education, games, and so forth. Again, really nice visual effects on these, on these menus. This brings me to my other, I guess, hit on Ceylon Linux. You guys know, if you've been watching any of my videos, you know how I feel about bloat and an operating system. This, uh, 
Ceylon Linux has everything but the kitchen sink installed. If you're a more advanced Linux user and that's what you're looking for, go for it. But for a newer Linux user, if you have this many uh, applications installed, it can be overwhelming. It can be a bit confusing. Now, one thing I will say for them is if you hover over, say, Amarok, you can see that there is a nice pop-up that show, tells you what the application is for. So Amarok, rediscover your music. Audacity, record and edit audio files. So that's going to help, but I don't know. For me, in my opinion, I wish I would pare down this uh, selection of applications and just provide the best of each category. I think it would really, really improve the overall feel of this operating system and really take it from being an okay distro to being a stellar outstanding distribution because I really think Ceylon Linux they're on the right track they they're doing the right things so let's take a look at some of these applications of course we're not going to hit them all under accessories of course we have the archive man manager cuttlefish automator set up automated responses for changes that occur in your computer so that's pretty cool uh, Redshift is installed. So, yeah, screenlets, screenshot application, of course, Synapse. For education, KMplot is a function plotter. Quux, Universal Circuit Simulator. And Step, simulate phys physics experiments. So if you're a college student, there may be something there for you. For games, you have a PlayStation em emulator. Under graphics, there is plenty to choose from. So if you're into graphics and editing, and that that really seems to be the the where the 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 bulk of the bloke comes from is in the graphics and the sound and video area. So if you are into a lot of sound and video, a lot of graphic editing, you know you may like this just the way that it is because they're going to have pretty much everything you're looking for. Under internet. Uh, you have quite a bit to choose from, including four web browsers. So, yeah, again, a bit bloated here. You have Wi-Fi Radar, YCD Network Manager. I mean, I really think they need to pare this back just a bit. Office, you have a very nice selection. I am pleased with their Office menu. You have the LibreOffice Suite, as well as several other nice uh, Office utilities good list of programming uh, uh, in your programming menu good a good good list of applications there uh, including the composer web editor and the glade interface designer so I like both of those very much uh, for science we have a mo advanced molecular editor I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that one uh, GNOME predict for satellite tracking so if you're uh, if you're a sky watcher you know, you can go out there and actually see when the space stations are coming over. You have a periodic table, as well as Stellarium. And if you haven't played with Stellarium, this is one of the stars of the Linux world. It is an interactive uh, virtual planetarium. Really nice. So under sound and video, you have just about everything you could ever want in sound and video. All, everything runs the gamut from audio to video editing, uh, screencasting, it just has everything you could you could possibly want in there. For system tools, Bleachbit is installed. Let's see, we have a remote desktop client. So, you know what the the system menu seems to be very nice actually. I, I like the system tools. They, they they have avoided too much bloat here, and what they do have are some very nice uh, applications. Under preferences, you can this is where you're going to find your Compass setting manager as well as your Emerald theme manager. So if you want to tweak the themes and tweak the uh, tweak the bling, your, your visual effects here, this is where you're going to do it from. And Wine is installed along with Wine Tricks and Play on Linux so you can get your game on. So all told, you know, I really like Ceylon Linux. 
even though it does have a bit of bloat and I wanted to pull this open for you too if you look at the theming on this it is a beautiful visually appe visually appealing desktop that really you know it, it shines it has one of the better implementations of compass that I've seen on an Ubuntu based distribution it's consistent it's fairly lightweight considering everything that's in, involved with it and you know I had a lot of fun playing with Ceylon again uh, I wish they would pair back the applications change their default synapse key binding oh and there was one other thing uh, Miro if you want Miro to work Miro is uh, you can watch a lot of online content a lot of online television if you're into that you know streaming TV from your from your laptop to your from your television Miro is very good for that but it will not work on this default installation and that was ginger <laughs> Miro uh, is tied to the developer I guess is looking for Naveen's uh, home directory there for to work so if you want to get Miro working you may have to I'm sure there's a configuration file in there somewhere you are got to find the configuration file and edit it or just uninstall it and reinstall it so give it a try I you know I would recommend I would recommend it if you're into the eye candy if you especially if you're into a lot of video editing uh, Ceylon may be up your maybe up your alley there so give it a try tell me what you think leave it in a comment below if there's another distribution you want me to take a look at please don't forget to put that in the comments I will get to it uh, this one took me a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we're here. So thank you for joining me today. I hope to be with you soon for another video.